Hello YouTube, uh, Military Music here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick overview of my deactivated gun collection. I've only got three, but I'm very happy with them all. So, let's get down to it, and I'll show them to you. I'm going to start off with this Hungarian AMD 65. Now, obviously they're deactivated, but this is a new spec deactivation, so slides welded, trigger moves though, um, and there's lots of welded parts inside. Stock folds nicely, magazine comes out. This is a 30 round magazine, it's not for the AMD as far as I know, but it came with it. Uh, the AMD 65 used a 20 round magazine, so it didn't hit in the way of the foregrip here. Um, it's not in the best of condition, it's got a nick in the front guard here. Uh, it's covered in spots where uh, paint has come off as rust in some bits, but rust isn't too bad. Um, so it is partially strippable, uh, but because it's a new spec, it's not very stri strippable compared to the old spec one. So the top cover comes off. Uh, you can take the spring out, um, and you can, if I get my universal gun stripping tool, take the gas tube off, though it is very stiff. Oh god. There you go, got it. Gas tube comes off. Uh, there's no gas piston or anything. But now it's stripped, I can show you the extent of the deactivation. So, the bolt carrier and bolt are welded in half. Um, trigger mechanism is still intact but it's welded inside there, I don't know if you can see that. I will, by the way, I will be doing a detailed close-up for all these guns. These are just, um, this is just an overview, so you will get detailed shots of these. And then inside there you can see the barrel has been cut and welded and a steel rod inserted. Oh, sorry, I got interrupted there and I've lost my train of thought. Um, so yeah, and a steel rod inserted into the barrel. Oh, and also, interestingly, for some reason they've decided to weld on the um, flash hider, or compensator, I'm not sure which it is, I think it's a flash hider, um, I guess, so people can't remove it and put, on, put it on a live gun. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, and the safety is welded. So it's basically completely inoperable. Uh, you need to do a lot of work to it if you wanted to get it working again, which is very unlikely to be honest. Um, oh, also, another moving part, the sight, rear sight, with the ranges. So, all in all, it's a really nice gun. Um, I want to get a couple of accessories for it, see what's out there. I need, I need a cleaning rod for it, that's missing. Um, and I know you can get a uh, stock rises for it so when you aim down that your uh, cheek isn't directly on the uh, wire stock um, and also I want to get a rail that goes on the side here because I've got a interesting little thing here an MSZP3 night vision scope so I'll get that out of its box and show it to you I will be doing a detailed video on this as well at some point, but for now, here it is. That would go on the side of the AMD 65 using this mount here, but you need a rail to go on the gun for it to uh, fit in there, fit on there. Right, next up is this. This is a Belgian uh, FN model 2430, I believe. I have not been able to find out much about this rifle at all, to be honest, searching online. Uh, most of the things I um, find out about it are either not... Sorry, when I'm looking online, the only ones I can find are the Yugoslavian versions and uh, Argen I think it's Argentinian or Chilean um, exports. So, this is a new spec as well, but the bolt still goes back. Um, and dry fires, that's a nice little feature. It's got the cleaning rod. 
And overall it's in very nice condition. There's a few bumps and marks, obviously. Um, and I need to oil up the uh, bolt. It is strippable too, but I don't know really how to strip it down. All I know has to do at the moment is take the bolt out. Um, but again, I will find out and I will be doing a detailed video on it. But interestingly enough about with this rifle is that it was reissued to, I think it was Saudi Arabia. Not sure what year, but it's got some nice Arabic markings on it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but like I said, I will be doing a detailed uh, video of all these weapons. This is a nice gun. It's a very nice hold. It's got a bit of history behind it with the Arabic reissuing. Let's put that to the side. Here's the next gun. Now this is probably my favourite gun in my collection so far. Albeit small collection, but it's one of my favourites. This. This is a Portuguese FMP G3. So it is a Portuguese built version of the H&K G3. It is mechanically identical. Uh, pretty much the only differences with it is the uh, markings. Other than that, it is identical. So you've got a sling here. Uh, magazine, removable. I've got a few more magazines for that as well. With some inert rounds in this glass cabinet behind me. Uh, Fortunately though, it is a new spec, so safety doesn't move. Although, something which is quite cool is the slide still works. So there's no spring in it, so you can't perform the H&K slap properly. Um, but I'm sure you could get a spring for it. I don't know if that would be illegal or not. But it's got nice wooden furniture. Uh, the sight, rear sight aperture is adjustable. Um, so, I'll show you to the extent to the extent of which you can strip this down. If I get the sling off the front here, I will show you. There you go. Now, get my handy tool again and get these pins out. Now, these pins are really stiff. They're an absolute pain in the ass to get out, but I'll try my best. Now they're out. The stock can come out. There you go, there's the stock with the uh, spring here. I'm not sure what that's for. I'm not sure if it's for the bolt and bolt carrier or not. So that's it. Oh, forgot about that. Uh, that can come off as well. Let's do that. Weesh. There you go, and there's the lower receiver. As you can see, welded up in there. Trigger doesn't move, safety doesn't move. Uh, so that is it now. Just the upper receiver and barrel and all that. And the front furniture comes off too, so let's do that. Now that's much easier to get off. There you go, there's the front grip. There's the barrel. Again, it's got a nice weld and cut in it. And that is the G3. As far down as you can uh, strip it. Unfortunate. Yeah. I would have loved an old spec G3. But now with the new EU specification of deactivation, that will never happen, unfortunately. So let's hope that law is revoked or something because it is ridiculous the reason they implemented it is supposedly because the uh, attacks in France in 2015 they uh, used reactivated deactivated guns so apparently none of us can own deactivated guns now or old spec ones at least, because they were easier to reactivate but any determined terrorist is going to be 
be able to get their hands on a gun one way or another if they really want to. So, personally, I think the law is a bit pointless and just ruins it for everyone else, the collectors who I'm rambling on here. I don't know if this will make the final cut. So, that was my deactivated gun collection so far. Now, as I repeatedly have said through the video, I will do individual videos on each one of them, just to show details, markings, uh, processes, stripping it down. Uh, so yeah, thanks very much for watching. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video, and maybe check out some more. So, thank you, goodbye.